All right, now we got to type in one of the trickiest formulas we're going to have. So we don't really need a label, but if you want, what you're going to be doing is taking the midpoint m minus the mean, and then you're going to square it, and you're going to times it by the frequency. That label is just kind of helping us out with what we're about to do here. So let's figure out what it is for real. Equals. Now the midpoint for this class was this cell over here, B2. So I'm going to type parentheses. Oops. It froze on me. Escape. Oh, there it is. It's back. Oh, I love Excel. All right, midpoint, which was mean. Now you got to be careful. You cannot let this mean cell change. And you know what that means, what we learned in chapter two. It's going to need dollar signs. Now the fast way to give it dollar signs is to press the F4 button. If you press that, it gives it instantaneous dollar signs to both the D and the 10. That's what you're going to have to have. Close your parentheses. Carrot 2. Carrot's above your 6 button. It means you're going to square it times it by the frequency. Now the frequency is over here in cell C2. All right, so let's double check. It's taking the midpoint, this blue box, minus the mean, this green box, and squaring that, and then timesing it by the frequency. And we're very careful that the green one can never change. That way when I drag this down, the blue and the purple box will change, but the green one will never change and will always stay at the mean. So let me press Enter. And then I'm going to go back up and I'm going to click and drag. Just as far down as this. I don't want to go down to the sum row. As a matter of fact, I'm about to drag the sum row across. I want the sum of all of this stuff. So there's the sum of this column. Fabulous. All right, now to find the variance. The variance is equal to one of two things. You could have the population variance or you could have the sample variance. Now every problem is going to have a different thing. In this particular problem, which is right here, it says that it's a random sample. Since it says random sample, I must want sample variance. If it doesn't say that, then it probably wants population variance. So you got to look through it. But I'm going to teach you how to find both. For population variance, you want this sum you just found, 8978, divided by the frequency. That's the population variance. For the sample variance, you want that same sum, 8978, divided by, but instead of 750, you want to do parentheses, 750 minus 1, because variance is n minus 1 in the denominator. It just makes the variance a little bit larger to accommodate for the fact that it's a sample, not a population. All right, this is the one we want in this particular example because it says random sample in the problem. If it didn't say that, then you could go with population variance. All right, now that we know that, how do you find the standard deviation? Well, there's two standard deviations. There's the population standard deviation, and there's the sample standard deviation. But they get calculated very similarly. To find the population standard deviation, which is known as sigma, it looks like an O with a tail on it. You type equals, and what you need is the square root of this. Square root is S-Q-R-T. There it is, square root, parentheses, and then you want to tell it what you want it to take the square root of, which for population standard deviation, it would be the population variance in cell E10. Close my parentheses, enter, and then I'll do the same thing. S-Q-R-T of this. There we go. Now the one I want for this problem again is this one because it was a sample. It said so in the instructions. Whew, there we go. It's one of the most difficult things we do with Excel. It's a very complicated formula. And don't forget those dollar signs. And down here for the sample, don't forget to put parentheses in here when you do C9 minus 1. The sum of the frequencies take away one. You need to take away one to accommodate for the fact that you don't know as much in a sample as you do in a population. All right, we're done with 3.3. Next time we'll move on to 3.4.